Goliath, the towering champion of the Philistines, strutted with pride before the Israelite army, taunting their god and daring them to single combat. His immense stature cast a shadow of fear over the Israelites. They trembled at the sight of this colossal adversary, wondering how they could possibly overcome such a formidable giant in battle. Yet David, a mere youth visiting his brothers at the Israelite camp, overheard the giant's blasphemous taunts and felt a surge of destiny. Unarmed with conventional weapons, David embraced the challenge to uphold the honor of his God and his people. Armed with only his shepherd's sling and five smooth stones, he boldly advanced towards the giant, undaunted by Goliath's daunting presence. Fueled by unwavering faith that he was guided by God's spirit, David skillfully hurled a single stone from his sling with lethal precision, triumphantly toppling the mighty giant. Perhaps this tale of David's triumphant victory over the giant Goliath stands as one of the most iconic and inspirational stories in biblical literature. Isn't the tale of an underdog, a seemingly ordinary boy who triumphs over a seemingly invincible foe, captivating to us all? For skeptics, this tale is nothing more than a figment of vivid imagination, an inspiring yet highly embellished legend born from the mists of time. They view it as a narrative woven from fragmented and vague memories, chronicled centuries after the events it claims to depict, casting doubt on its factual basis. Indeed, how could a simple shepherd boy defeat a heavily armored Philistine warrior using nothing but a sling? This question opens the door to an even more profound question. Did giants like Goliath truly walk the earth in our ancient past? Skeptics are poised for a stunning revelation. As recent scientific breakthroughs unearth compelling evidence suggesting that Goliath is not merely a myth, but a real entity deeply ingrained in the historical record. Let's delve into the compelling evidence that corroborates the existence of the giant Goliath. But before diving into our story, let's unravel the mysterious truths about our colossal giant, exploring facets of his legend that are still cloaked in uncertainty. Describing him merely huge would be a gross understatement. The ancient scriptures and Hebrew Masoretic texts paint a strikingly vivid portrait of Goliath's colossal stature. He was an imposing figure, standing at six cubits in a span that's approximately nine feet six inches tall. His daunting stature was further amplified by heavy body armor, rendering him an even more formidable force in battle. He wore a bronze coat of mail akin to the shimmering scales of a fish, meticulously crafted from brass plates and weighing approximately 57 kilograms. His spear, estimated to be 10 to 14 feet long, boasted a shaft comparable to a weaver's beam, approximately 2 inches in diameter. The spearhead itself was a hefty 6.8 kilograms. Goliath's formidable ensemble also featured a bronze helmet reflecting the style typical of Assyrians from that period. Scholars suggest that the combined weight of his weaponry and armor exceeded 700 pounds, a burden that far surpasses what an ordinary man could carry, underscoring the extraordinary might and endurance required to carry such a battle-ready attire. Tracing Goliath's ancestry presents complexities, sparking scholarly debates. Some theorists suggest that Goliath might have belonged to the Nephilim, a legendary race conceived from the union of fallen angels and human women, renowned for their immense size and exceptional abilities. The Nephilim were regarded as formidable beings. However, this theory encounters a notable discrepancy, as it is widely believed that the Nephilim perished in Noah's Great Flood, casting doubt on their direct connection to Goliath in the post-Diluvian world. Alternatively, some scholars propose that Goliath was a Rephaim, a different race of giants believed to have emerged after the Flood. This hypothesis gains credibility from the detail that Goliath, along with his four brothers, were identified as the son of Rapha, reinforcing the connection to the Raphaite lineage. Perhaps you've been intrigued to learn that Goliath had brothers, lesser known yet equally formidable figures in their own right. Living in their shadow of their renowned colossal brother, Ishbai Bina, Sa, Lachmi, and the unnamed giant were collectively revered as the lords of the Philistines. This fact casts a new light on David's choice to gather five stones before his showdown with Goliath, a strategic move born from the knowledge that he might have to contend with each of Goliath's fearsome brothers in turn. Taking into account the upbringing of Goliath and his siblings in Gath, a city famed for being a stronghold of the Anakim, a separate race of giants noted in the Bible, it is conceivable that they shared familial connections with the Anakim, 
In fact, some scholars theorize that the Philistines themselves might have descended from the Anakim lineage. The Anakim trace their lineage to Anak, himself a descendant of Arba. Their first significant mention occurs in Numbers chapter 13. This chapter narrates how Moses sent spies into Canaan, the land promised by God to Israel. When these spies returned, they reported encountering people great and tall, identified as the sons of Anak. Overwhelmed with fear and deeming themselves as mere grasshoppers in comparison, the Israelites rebelled against God and hesitated to claim the land God had destined for them. To build a credible account of the historical presence of Goliath and the Anakims, it is essential to examine the archaeological evidence from the city of Gath, their reputed stronghold. These findings in this ancient city offer compelling proof, suggesting that the tales of these biblical giants are rooted in reality, not mere myth. King Hazael of Syria, ruling from 842 to 796 BC, successfully conquered the city of Gath. This fierce and infamous invasion has been confirmed by archaeological evidence discovered at Tel Asafi, a significant excavation site located between Jerusalem and Ashkelon. This site has undergone extensive and sophisticated archaeological studies, notably under the guidance of American-born Israeli archaeologist Aaron Meyer from Bar Ilan University since 1966. Underneath the destruction brought by Hazael, fascinating structures have been uncovered, capturing the keen interest of the archaeological world. This hidden layer holds the key to potentially resolving the long-standing debate about the existence of giants mentioned in the Bible, sparking intrigue and speculation. Archaeologists unearthed remarkable structures, predating the settlement devastated by Hazael's 830 BC conquest. The structures uncovered were far from ordinary ancient constructions. They were characterized as super-sized remains of enormous architecture and fortifications. Earlier excavations at Tel Asafi, dating back to the 10th and 9th centuries BC, revealed minimal fortifications, yet a layer beneath dating to the 11th century reveals massive architecture, distinctly different from its upper layers. This aligns with the era of the biblical account in the first book of Samuel, chapter 17, marking the first time when the future King David defeated Goliath. The unearthed remains feature exceptionally large structures and fortifications, constructed with stones far surpassing the typical size of that era in the Levant. While subsequent layers at the site utilize stones around half a meter in length, the so-called Goliath layer boasts massive blocks ranging between one and two meters. The archaeological discoveries strongly support the idea that the city functioned as a refuge for the giant Anakim, as described in historical narratives. Adding to the intriguing evidence, archaeologists discovered that Gath boasts colossal gates matching its immense fortifications and walls. In 2015, Professor Meyer's team unearthed the massive gate entrance to the city, further substantiating its grand scale. In addition to the monumental gate, the team discovered ironworks and a Philistine temple nearby. Accompanying these significant structures were various artifacts, including pottery, which are characteristically linked with Philistine culture. In 2005, archaeologists at Tel Asafi found a pottery shard, or ostracon, inscribed with the ancient names AWLT and WLT, dating back to the 10th and early 9th centuries BC. The linguistic connection between these names and Goliaths, pronounced Goyat in Hebrew, are striking. Demonstrating Indo-European rather than Semitic roots, unlike typical Canaanite and Hebrew names, these names compellingly point to the distant Mediterranean heritage of the Philistines. This interesting language evidence helps us understand where the Philistines came from and also strengthens the idea that the story of Goliath is historically accurate, particularly in the way it names him correctly. In 1962, an Israeli farmer made a remarkable discovery near Kafar Monash, 55 miles north of Tel Asafi. He unearthed artifacts of extraordinary dimensions, far too large for ordinary human use. Among these were four copper spearheads, distinguished by their graceful proportions and exquisite craftsmanship, suggesting a connection to beings or warriors of formidable stature. Although uniform in shape, they range in size from 33.3 centimeters to a substantial 66 centimeters, with the largest weighing 2.05 kilograms. Signs of wear, particularly on the heaviest, suggest they were used in battle. When originally paired with their shafts, these formidable weapons would likely have towered over the height of a man. The report highlights a stark contrast between these oversized weapons and the average 6-7 to centimeter weapons typical in the ancient Middle East of that era. 
The Monash spears, with their exceptional size and weight, would likely be cumbersome for ordinary use, implying that they might have been wielded by beings of considerable stature, possibly giants. Perhaps the most compelling approach to validate Goliath's existence might be through establishing the historical reality of his famed adversary, King David. Demonstrating David as a verifiable figure of history could inherently lend credence to Goliath's existence as well. The discovery of the Tel Dan Stele in 1993 in northern Israel accomplished just this, offering an intriguing clue to the historical existence of King David. Found within ancient wall masonry, this stele bears an inscription in Old Aramaic with a pivotal line, BYTDWD, or House of David. This reference, believed to be penned by Syrian King Hazael, an adversary of Israel, serves as compelling evidence of King David's existence. Not only that, Archaeologists believe that they found where David and Goliath faced a duel. The 3,000-year-old site is known by its modern name, Kirbet Kiafa, near Beit Shemesh, southwest of Jerusalem. It overlooks the Elah Valley. This fortified city is the only archaeological site from the time of King David. The ancient olive pits prove that the site now known as Kirbet Kiafa existed in the early 10th century BC. Archaeologists discovered the city's two gates, a western one which faced the biblical city of Philistine Gath, and a southern one which faced Judah. They connected the site of Kirbet Kiafa with the biblical city of Sharem, Hebrew for two gates mentioned in the story of David and Goliath. In a building near the southern gate, archaeologists excavated a group worship room. They uncovered two building models, one made from clay and the other carved in limestone. The latter proved the royal architecture that the Bible attributed to the palace and temple in Jerusalem was known in this region too. Their team identified remnants of one building found as David's palace and the other as a massive royal storeroom. A highly centralized administration apparently took nearly 1,000 tons of stones to construct. Experts assert that Kirbet Kiafa's layouts corroborates the historical accounts preserved in the Bible. Prior to King David's reign, the region comprised small agriculture, tribal communities, which evolved into urban centers by the 10th century BC. The city's design, mirroring other Judean cities, suggests a centralized state existed during David's time. As we progress through time, more archaeological discoveries are likely to emerge, substantiating the existence of biblical figures like Goliath. Ultimately, confirming the reality of Goliath transcends mere validation of scriptural narratives it acts as a profound source of inspiration. It reinforces the belief that with faith in God, even the seemingly impossible becomes achievable. What are your thoughts about this? I hope you like our story. Until the next one.